everyone. Hopefully we are live and you can hear us. Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, along with Sarah. Hello. And um, this is not, this was, I was kind of messing around with colors a little bit before. Hopefully our finished project will look a lot better than this, but just to give you an idea, we're going to paint a black cat in watercolor and we are going to um, do some accents with colored pencil at the end if it's needed. So um, if you have any questions as we're going along, type the word question in all caps and uh, Sarah can let me know or the moderators can help you out with that. So um, let's see, the colors we're going to use, we'll want to make puddles of them on our palette and I do have the traceable pattern available. It is a JPEG this time. I uh, kind of got running behind today and my, my uh, image editing software has not been behaving so I need to uninstall and reinstall it and uh, uh, so it's been a little, a little hectic, um, but I do have a JPEG of that you can resize and print out. I'm going to make a puddle here of Prussian Blue, PV27, um, uh, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, which I believe is a quinacridone base, probably a PV19, I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh look, I, I put all my, my uh, I put a, like a piece of tape around PR264. Um, I write my, num my names and numbers on a piece of tape and stick it to the edge of my palette, so I can remember, so there's a little tip for you. And we're also gonna grab some Cad Yellow Light. And that is PY35, but so is regular Cad Yellow. So um, if you go with a warmer Cad Yellow, you're gonna get more brown than black tone. So we're gonna be mixing all of our colors from these primaries here. And this video is brought to you by jerryzartorama.com. You can find all the supplies I'm using there, but of course, feel free to use whatever you have at home. I cover everything? I think so. All right, we're gonna start by wetting our paper. I'm just working, oh, I didn't uh, list what paper I was working on, because honestly, I grabbed this out of my uh, my bin of pre-torn uh, papers and it was kind of a uh, straggler on its own, so I'm pretty sure it's Arches, <laughs> but it could be uh, Fabriano or Langton Prestige. It doesn't really matter, just a decent quality watercolor paper. Can be viewer's choice. And now I'm going to start throwing in a background, and I think I'm going to start with this uh, alizarin crimson. Just kind of let the colors flow. I'm avoiding the cat. And this was a viewer request from Shelly Spaulding. She um, sent some photos of her cat to me, and um, it just happened to fit in really well with a uh, Halloween theme or October theme. So I was happy that I could uh, work on this picture and hopefully I do her cat justice and she's not horribly offended by how I paint her. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a little of that yellow in there. This is gonna dry lighter because our paper's pretty wet. Mixing in a little bit of Prussian blue. Don't worry about the colors um, morphing onto the, the animal because this is just a really light background layer. And you can tape this down if you want to. I just uh, was really, really behind today, so it didn't happen. And now I'm gonna mix up some violet. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the crimson here. And some more water, and I'm going to put this on the cat. I'm not actually going to be using any black paint, however, um, when we go into the color pencil layer at the end for details, I probably will add uh, some black or some just dark, dark browns or maybe indigos. I like to use indigo in place of black a lot. And how is the chat doing, Sarah? Good. Uh, Katie, playing with art, have you tried the Prima Metallic accents? If so, do you like them? Prima Metallic? Are they a watercolor? I don't think, I haven't, I haven't tried any metallics from Prima. Um, I don't know if they're, uh, I know they have like a little metallic, uh, pan watercolor set and they, they have a lot of acrylic products. I haven't tried any of their acrylic products. Uh, Cassandra Gilbert, what is, what? Is the benefit of wetting your paper before starting a painting? It's gonna let my colors um, blend and it's gonna let me have a nice soft background and that way I don't have any hard edges where I don't want them. It can be a little um, kind of scary to do this sometimes but I, I just like the way it looks. I feel like my painting overall will look a lot more unified when I'm done.
All right, I want to start getting in some darker colors in some areas. So what I'm going to do is uh, mix up the violet again, but less water. So I'm grabbing some of the Prussian blue pretty thickly. I'm going to rinse my brush off, but I'm going to kind of scrape off as much water as I can on the side of my bucket. So I just have enough to activate the paint in my pan. I'm going in for some more of that permanent ozone and crimson. And I'm going to need a little bit more blue here. All my kids are home today, so hopefully they will uh, remember to stay off the internet. I already gave them a, uh, gave them a warning or requested... This blue is really strong, so I'm just gonna kind of go and let it let it float in in some places. I might end up spreading it out a bit, but don't be afraid of the of the strong color. I know it can be a little bit um, intimidating and it can be a little scary, but remember, our when you have your paper really wet, it always dries lighter. And we want our cat to be fuzzy, so we don't want a lot of we want that kind of soft. Effect. I'm going to go with a bigger brush. Keep in mind though when you are putting the paint down to uh, go with the direction of the fur, the way the fur would be growing. Just like you're petting the cat, that's how you should be running, running your brush. Jordan Sinclair, would Hansa Yellow work for this? Yeah, Hansa Yellow Light would work fine. I was just trying to get a real orangey yellow because that's going to give you more brown. Your cool uh, colors will mix much cleaner. That's why we're using Prussian Blue and uh, Crimson because they're, they're cool. I'm just able to give it a really soft texture uh, by just kind of going in. My brush is almost dry, so you can see the bristles are kind of splayed apart there, and I'm using that to my advantage. It's not going to put down so much paint that I end up with, um, with a really fuzzy edge or too much color, but it's going to give me a little bit of texture that I can build on top of. So you'll learn that like the more you paint with watercolor, the more you'll get used to... Um, how to deal with the paper or what the paper is best for when it's in these certain uh, layers of dampness. You'll know like how much your paint's gonna spread if your paint is if your paper is this damp. You'll know if you like if I went in with a super wet brush now, I would end up with blooms everywhere because the uh, the paper is not fully dry and it would make the uh, paper dry in an uneven way and it would give me blooms. But if I go in and just almost just kind of dry brush, I'll make these soft streaks. And it's not going to bloom because I'm not introducing a wetter brush. I'm not. I'm just kind of spraying around what I have there. Now at this point, I am going to blot the eye, and then I'm going to hit this with the dryer. So if you have any questions, then you can go ahead and type the word question in chat, and Sarah can uh, ask me. I have my quiet dryer up here right now, so we should be able to hear your questions and hear hear Sarah and hear me. <coughs> I'm just using a Kleenex here to blot. Paper towel will work just as well. I don't find as I have as good of a luck with uh, with using cotton like uh, like towels to blot with. Any puddles too? You want to grab those at this point. And where is my dryer? I gotta plug it in. Any questions while I'm <laughs> so smoothly plugging in my heat tool here? Uh, well, there's an acrylic paint question. Well, I'll take it if there's no other one, sure. Um, if I can answer it. <laughs> I have some folk art paint water base that have dried up to a thick, I don't know what she meant to type, can they be saved? If they're, uh, if acrylic paint is thick but still creamy, you can add water to them. If it's chunky, you gotta toss them. They've probably been frozen. Any other questions? That's it.
Oh, wow. Yeah. So Inktober is happening in, uh, in the art world which is uh, 31 days of doing a brand new ink sketch every day. There's probably Inktober in like the tattoo world too, I bet. When people get every day is Inktober in the tattoo world. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> every day is Inktober. I'm trying to think if there's any other new and noteworthy uh, things happening in Artlandia. Oh, there'll be no live show next week. And um, we might be a little up in the air with dates this month because our Fridays have been uh, have been being booked up by events out of our control. So uh, so just stay tuned to my blog, and I will keep you guys updated with live show times and all that jazz. And of course, it's Inktober, so there's a daily pen and ink sketch uh, on my channel. Anyway, if you get really desperate for some art. Watercolor tube? Um, I wouldn't melt it. I would peel the um, the tube away, cut the tube off, and then just plop it into a palette and use it that way. Maybe, I mean, it would dissolve in water, but you're gonna make a mess. I've I've struggled with um, with tubes like that before. Okay, so now we're gonna go in with the next layer of detail, and I'm gonna stick with that big brush, and I'm gonna mix up. Um, I'm gonna need some more violet, I think, for that. And uh, I think I'm going to start in where it's the darkest and just start throwing in some loose detail. So with this brush, I have the advantage of being able to use just the, the tip and do some dry brushing, but I can also uh, press it more and get some uh, more color down and I could even spread my bristles apart and get a little dry brushing. Uh, something that's kind of handy is to have another brush that's dry that you can just kind of drag out some of that so that you do end up with a little little bits of, of fur without having to you know dry off your brush or spray out the bristles so you don't have to you can work a little quicker I guess. Lindsay when you yep. do the detail on the paws mm -hmm. can you slide your painting up for some reason, on the, on the, oh, sure. image, the bottom part where his paws and stuff are cut off. Oh, you're not going to see the paws. I'll slide it up a little bit. It yeah. just kind of goes down to the bottom of the chest. But okay. yes, I can slide that up when we're working on that. Okay, yeah. I think I, I, I zoomed in a little tight. But at least we don't have autofocus problems this autofocus week. Autofocus is great. Image is great. Sound seems to be good. So I, was, I just I, it looked cut. Picked up too. Yes, absolutely. Good call. Uh, Moon Ram, could you compare the paper in the Jane Davenport canvas journal to watercolor paper? Um, it's, it's, uh, I think it's a 90 pound hot press paper. It's got a little bit more texture than what I typically, um, have on hot press paper. I like it most for mixed media. I, it's not what I would pick first for like, uh, just a pure watercolor painting because it is kind of thin. Um, but for mixed media, I'm really enjoying it or for ink, I'm really enjoying it, but it is definitely like a, like a 90 pound. It's got more texture to it than like the Canson XL mixed media paper. If you're familiar with that. Um, but the texture, the texture is, it's not as like textured as like this watercolor paper, uh, a, a cold press. I find the more that I use it, the better I like it. At first I wasn't it's crazy about it because it, I felt like it, um, it just felt really thin compared to like my 140 pound watercolor paper, but I can show, well, uh, you want to pass me on a book right there? I've got, that's, that's my journal, my, I can kind of show you the thickness difference, I think. So I'll show you here. One side's a little bit smoother. One side's a little, it has a little bit of a texture, more of a texture to it. You probably can't see that on camera, but that's how thick that is. And this is 140 pound. So it's, you know, it's just a little bit thinner. Um, I hope that, I hope that helps. I haven't had it. I haven't really done any scrubbing or lifting on it. I don't know how well it would react to that. It does take thicker media like acrylic and gesso really well. So I'd say if you think you want to use 
um, a variety of medias and do collage and stuff, it'll work really well. If you're just doing straight watercolor, you might want to just get a straight watercolor pad that's 140 pound. And I wish I got the larger one rather than the smaller one, but the larger one uh, at my local Michaels was damaged, so I got the smaller one. But I find that's a, that's, for me, it's a small size to work in. Uh, Paula H., any author or book recommendations for beginning watercoloring? Uh, Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Watercolor by Mary Appeloff. Kurt Schwartz, will ceramic or enamel palettes stain like plastic? They shouldn't. Uh, ceramic ones should not stain. You should be able to get the stains off of, of them. Sometimes enameled ones will stain, like uh, like the enameled tins. And it's just it's certain colors that stain more than others. It's your like uh, cyan, your thalo, thalo colors, and your quinacridones, um, and some colors do not stain at all. And the magic eraser, we usually get a lot of those stains up. They usually don't they don't bother me because I can still see my colors clearly that I'm working with. We're soft, softening with this uh, this other brush that doesn't really have any stuff on it. B is Creative Designs. I'm already using Cameron watercolor paper and still getting peeling while painting. And I'm not even pressing hard or doing multiple layers. Any advice? I'm fairly new to watercolor. Was it Cameron or Canson? It, maybe she meant Canson, but it, it came out Cameron. Yeah, I knew. I do know, like the student, like the student Canson paper cannot take a lot of scrubbing, so or or tons of water. Um, so it could. It's probably the paper, uh, or you might be it, as long as you're not using a brush that's super thi uh, stiff. If you're using a really stiff brush, that would be why it's behaving that way. But it sounds like it's the paper, and I would um, I would invest in a better quality paper. Um, you can buy a big sheet of arches and tear it down into smaller pieces so that it's a little bit more economical. So like you can take one sheet of arches and tear it down into about eight pieces of paper that are about this size. So you can get eight paintings out of it. And I think that, um, especially anytime you want to put a lot of time in and you want to, you know, really, ex you know, scrub and lift and, you know, spend a lot of time on something, it's going to be worth it. I mean, just for quick doodles and sketches, stick with the uh, Canson, um, because you're not going to be going back over something time and time again. But whenever you think you're going to be putting some serious time in, it does pay to get the, get the more robust paper. I'm just going in and getting some of the uh, darker areas in the face and I'm doing that with a number 12 round and I'm just pretty much using the tip. And it's quite freeing knowing that I'll probably use some colored pencils later so I don't feel like I have to uh, be too fussy over anything which is nice. And you can also just kind of put some wispy little lines in here, like you're painting around the fur that's going to be in the ears. And black cats generally have this kind of almost bald area where the hair is thin, um, kind of between the eyes and the ears, just the kind of eyebrow area. It's where the ticks like to get them. Mm, yes, it is. <sighs> Mary shows, what is the best way to flatten out paintings for framing? Um, I've had good luck just, uh, like misting the back with a fine mist of water and then putting, um, a piece of wax paper over and putting a book down on top. As long as you mist the back and then just like kind of leave it someplace warm to dry. Like I wouldn't leave it in my cellar to dry like that cause it's kind of damp, but you know, bring it upstairs where it can dry and just leave it like that for a couple hours. That should do the trick. Getting the uh, 
the mouth and chin area. Now I didn't hear back from the, uh, if the person who, who sent me this photo was in the audience, her name is Shelly, I didn't, wasn't able to get permission via email from her to share the reference photo, but if she is there and she gives permission, let me know because I would show the reference photo. I wasn't sure I was going to do this uh, piece today, but it worked out. And I'm just dabbing in the areas where the, uh, it's always a little bit darker where the whiskers come out. I think it's because it parts the fur and it gives you this little bit of um, shadow. And then I'm just going to kind of, and I'm not adding, if you haven't, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm not like adding tons of paint. I'm just kind of going until my brush is running out of paint. And as it starts to run out, I start to go in and paint areas that don't need a lot of um that don't need a lot of color so I'm able to get the shading in with very little effort the other thing you want to be careful when you're doing something like this is um, be careful not to work over damp areas because you can end up lifting the paint and then you end up with um, with kind of streaks. I mean, you are going to have some streakiness just because of the way we're applying the paint, but it can like lift up and you could end up with some lighter streaks that you're not expecting. So we're going to go ahead and dry this in just a second. So if you have any questions, get them ready and you can pop them in the chat. Susan Walpert, is the cotton paper hot press or cold press? The paper I'm working on is cold press, um, and you'll notice on a lot of papers, one side will be a little bit smoother than the other, and in most cases, you can use either side. Some brands you can't, but in most cases, you can. You can pick the side that meets your needs better. Rebecca Corvo, wax paper on which side after misting? Mist the back side and put the wax paper on the front side and then put the heavy book down on top. That just keeps your, if, if any of that water does like seep through and it shouldn't, but if it does, that's just going to keep it from sticking to your book. I like to dry the back of my paper too while I'm working so that way it just helps even out the tension and helps it lie flatter. Another reason I don't tape down my paintings a lot of times if I've torn down my paper is because I like these deckled edges and it's kind of, I think it kind of looks pretty. All right, I'm just gonna bend it back a little bit. So now I'm gonna do some washes and that's gonna kind of um, mellow out any of the streaks that I have. And for wash colors, I'm going to um, pretty much take the purple that I have. I'm gonna add a little blue to make a cooler mix and I'll add some, um, some red to make a warmer mix. Chewy just like, just about gave me a heart attack when she jumped up. <laughs> like what? I'm not used to having a dog down here. All right, she's fine. Now she's laying next to me for my feet. <laughs> Something popping up from the other side of my table. <laughs> could be, you never know. Okay, I saw the drive in there showing, uh, they're showing Carrie and Misery oh, this weekend. Oh boy. Oh, I know. It's been a long time since I've seen those movies. Oh, I know, I know. They're, they're good ones. The audiobook Misery was was uh, so scary. Oh, was it? Yes, I love his audiobooks. Um, but it's funny because Annie, the crazy lady Annie, and the, and the I don't know if she doesn't. I don't think I know if I've seen. I don't think I've seen the movie actually. Oh no. No, I don't think I have. I've only listened to the audiobook. And uh, when she picks up that writer, she's like, "I'm your biggest fan." So sometimes I'm at a convention or something, someone will come up to me like, <laughs> "I'm your biggest fan." I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" You know that? I, that's what I immediately think. <laughs> Uh, Kayla Ray, what do you use to cut big sheets of paper down to size? It's something I struggle with. I'll show you. I use this ruler. I fold the paper and I have this huge, this is from an auto shop. It's a master mechanic um, ruler. And I lay that down over it and I tear against it and it works perfectly. It's a, a nice stiff metal ruler that's not too thick. That's set 469. I bought some cheap 140 pound watercolor paper pad for practice. When I apply the first strokes, the paint beads on top like a resist. Is 
the sizing you talk about causing that, how do I handle it? That does sound like sizing. Um, I'm wondering if it's a might be like a partially synthetic paper because the synthetic papers will do that. I think I would use that paper for when you want a um, a loose, watery um, kind of abstract look. Like anytime you might use a Yupo paper or something like that, um, which is a plastic paper that gives you some really cool effects. And I that's what I would use that for. And anytime when you need a more absorbent paper, maybe try. Um, like the Strathmore 400, if that's not very expensive and it's just, uh, you can get it at any craft store, so you can use like a big coupon on it. Um, and it's not very expensive. You got it like at Jerry's, even with the same price as the craft store with a coupon. Um, but that would, I think, suit you a lot better. Those, uh, papers that have a lot of sizing where things beat up can have some really fun effects. So I wouldn't toss them, just, um, maybe save them for any time you're doing like maybe an abstract floral or... Or something where you want to really let that paint go wild. So here I'm doing a combination of lying down some color and where I want to soften areas I'll just wet my brush and drag it around a little bit. This um, layer is toning down any of the uh, previous that previous streaky layer that I put down with more of the detail. I need more paint here. And it's not as dark as it's not as uh, concentrated as the uh, as the last layer either. Moon Ram, what is a good economical paper for watercolor painting? Um, Strathmore four hundred is good. Also Strathmore Wind Power. They act quite differently. The four hundred is going to act more like a cotton paper. It's much more absorbent. Um, and the wind power is going to just, it has a lot more sizing and it's going to be good for if you like to do a lot of lifting, um, or if you, you know, kind of like to sketch, sketch quickly, um, it's good for, for those types of, of techniques, but the 400 is going to act more like a cotton, although it's not going to be quite as robust for lifting. When you try to lift on the Strathmore 400, you might get some pilling. So, um, if you think you're going to do a lot of reworking and lifting, go with the Strathmore wind power. And if you think you're going to just kind of do some layering, but not lifting, I would go for the Strathmore 400 and the 400 has a brown label. So if you're in the craft store or you're shopping online, look for that brown label. And the wind power has a burgundy label and just avoid the yellow label. That That is uh, the Strathmore 300 brand. And it, um, I don't think it, it performs very well. It, it warps a lot. And um, it just it has almost like a, a tractor tire texture to it. It looks like somebody drove a tractor tire over it. It's not very pleasant. Uh, Shelly Spalding says, Oh, yeah. Uh, it says, it's f Feel free to show oh, post good. photo. Oh, thank you, Thank Shelley. you so much. This will be a great way to celebrate his fifth adoption day oh, anniversary. Oh, wonderful. Okay, Yay. so I'll show you the photo I'm working from then. Isn't that pretty? I just, uh, this was, I believe, Shelly's favorite. And I liked, I love the profile of that. And I thought sometimes it's fun to take a simple design and then kind of enhance it a little bit. So that is the photo. And I will put that up on my blog now that I have Shelly's permission. I just never want to put something on my website without having the photographer's permission. If it's not like explicitly, you know, allowed. Hmm. Holy moly, I have no idea what's going on up there. <laughs> You're playing marbles. <laughs> Sounds like it. All right, I'm gonna dry this layer. So again, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat. Susan Walper, what is lifting? Sorry, still learning. Oh, that's a great question. Lifting is when you scrub out an area and you blot it so that you bring back the light of the paper. Uh, sometimes we do that uh, to add a highlight. Sometimes we do that if we make a mistake. You generally brush over an area with clear water, sometimes using a stiff brush, like this one right here. This is uh, my favorite lifting brush. It's a Maxine's Mop. It's a little uh, Filbert uh, hog bristle brush and you just kind of scrub it and then blot it with a paper towel and it brings you back to the light of the paper in most cases. Sometimes it'll stain a little bit, you'll have some staining, but it'll lighten it up quite a bit. But it does, you do need a, a fairly rugged paper to hold up to that.
Okay, we're gonna mix some green for the eyes. Or the eye, you only can see one here. And that was another reason I chose this, um, this shot because you don't have to have line up two eyeballs, you just mm -hmm. got one. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna take a little of the Prussian blue and the Cad Yellow Light. go right in there now this the cad yellow light yellows in general are a little more opaque but cadmium colors are even more opaque so uh it'll stand out pretty well even if you you know covered over that little lot of paint uh if not you can scrub the area and blot it and that would be lifting and that would give you your bright color and i think i want to add just a little bit more of a of a blue towards the top of that because eyes usually have some different colors in there. I'm not going to do the pupil right now because that would just be fuzzy. And I'm going to stick around with that number four brush and see if there's any details that I want to add with the paint. I think there are. I want to make kind of a black um, from the colors that I'm using so I'm going to start off with my blue. I'm going to add some of my crimson. And then I'm going to add a smidgen of the yellow. The yellow you have to be real careful with because it does tend to want to brown things up. If it gets too green, you go to the opposite of green, which is red. Oh, and if you're using a warm yellow, it might be very difficult to get a black because it's going to want to go brown. Okay, that gave me a pretty good black, actually. And I'm going to start over here at the nose. And if you want a smaller brush, go ahead and go to a smaller brush. You don't have to use, uh, use whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm just going to kind of go around in areas that appear to be the darkest. I'm not going to do the eye yet, though, because that will, uh, that'll just blend in and make a mess. I think I'm actually going to grab my a smaller brush so I can drag out. Ah, I think some of the kids might use this brush. <laughs> I'm a little stiff. <laughs> the girls had a friend over this weekend, and uh, they asked to come down here and paint. And so, oh yeah, yeah, sure, that's fine. Use whatever you want. Then I was like, wait a minute. Whoa, what did I just say? <laughs> my watercolor brushes were on my table, so I went nice. out and I you can use any of these acrylic brushes, any of these acrylic paints. Except for these ones. Yeah, don't touch the watercolor brushes. My precious. <laughs> And it's amazing with just these three colors, the variety of paint you can get. It's uh, it's really kind of cool. I'm going to try to do as much work as I can with the watercolor before I go to the color pencil because color pencil is a more slow um, to cover medium. And watercolor, you can get a lot more work done, a lot less effort. They're great, it's, they're great uh, products to mix together because of that. You can get the kind of control and a little bit of opacity with the colored pencils. So you can paint with your watercolors a little bit freer knowing that you do have that kind of undo button coming up. Just doing little flicks of color here. And I can mix a little purple into that and then... Uh, my premixed purple when I want a softer color or if I want to fade that dark into something a little bit lighter. Like here on these little uh, parts where the whiskers come out, by adding a little purple to that real dark color, I can get a more natural look. JPC 13 Art, are there any watercolor paints you would never recommend to anyone? Oh boy, uh, I usually block those bad memories. Um, <laughs> geez, hmm, are there any that I wouldn't recommend? 
I, you know, most of the ones that I would say would I wouldn't recommend would be kind of those no name brands that would come in like kids kits. Um, so you know they don't even have they don't even have like a, they don't even have anyone owning up to them basically. So uh, I think there's generally, you know, there's a, there's a purpose for every paint. You know, some paints are gonna work better like for unsized paper, uh, for like card makers. Some are gonna work better. Um, on you know heavily sized paper so it's such a personal such a personal choice really so I can't really say that because any of the ones that I've tried that are awful are like the no-name brands and your budget plays a big big part in that what you know what you want to spend and what you're going to feel comfortable painting with. I am getting brave around the eye now that I know it's starting to dry up. So I'm applying it with a bigger brush and then fanning, uh, pulling out the hairs with a smaller brush. Okay, that feels pretty dry. I'm going to mix up a, uh, a little bit more of the darker colors that's the uh, all three colors but mostly blue then red then the yellow and we're gonna go dark in the socket area And we're going to get that pupil, pupil in there. And I think I want to put a little shadow on the eye. I'm going to get into that purple a little bit, into the blue a little bit. Kind of thin it down a little. So I've got kind of this kind of grayish color. I'm just going to put a little shadow on the eye from the eyelid eyelash area and let's see if there's any other little bits of dark I want to add to the face because that should be the most detailed area and after that you would kind of want the rest of the body just to kind of be a little less in focus. Delilah Bogart, have you try ever tried Prang? Oh yeah, they're wonderful uh, student watercolors. They're, they're superior to Crayola, and they're nice and transparent. They're a great, great set to start with. And what I'm doing here is kind of painting around all the little wispy hairs. So I'm just pulling in little uh, streaks. And I think I'll do a little bit kind of uh, down here where you have the kind of the back of the cat just to kind of push it back in the distance a little bit with a little shadow. Uh, Christina Faux, Bay, probably saying it wrong. If I want to buy my own watercolor practice book for mixing gradients and such, how many sheets? Per signature, would you suggest? My paper is about 135 pounds. Um, anytime I've done like a handmade watercolor journal, I've used like, um, I've used binder rings, honestly, because then you can keep adding to it and you can make a really thick book. So I haven't done the hand sewn ones. Um, a good resource for that would be uh, the YouTube channel Sea Lemon. She does tons of binding tutorials. So and she would have so much better advice for that. I would just use binder rings, quite frankly, and and uh, then be able to add and take away as I wanted to. And it will lay flat too. 
I think if I if I use signatures, I probably would end up with a with a book that didn't want to lay flat when I was working on it, and I like my books to lay flat. And I'm going to soften that up with a little bit of water because I got a little heavy handed here. Moon Ram, what are your thoughts on Straf Strathmore Ready Cut Hot Press Watercolor Paper? What is it good for? I think that's more meant for card makers um, because it's cut to like the size of a card. And um, there's a big popularity in watercolor techniques for card makers. So that's just so much more economical and, and um, convenient for a card maker rather than buying like big pads of paper to cut down. I am throwing a few of these little hairs in with um, with my number, was the number two round. Um, you can do that with pencil if you want to. I just figured I would do this right now and see how I liked it. And that will make me not have to do quite so much with the um, colored pencils. Plus the background's light. If the background was dark, I definitely would wait and do it with the uh, pencils. And I'm gonna do the same with some of the whiskers. Alexandra Manga, are you going to keep on doing the teachable watercolor classes based on textures and subjects? Yes, uh, yes. My next class is going to be a drawing class, though. Oop, I think I might have went a little too crazy on that one, but I'm going to make a longer one over here just to match it. Sorry, one of my cats has crazy <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to see them there, but I'm just going to throw a couple there. All right, so now I'm going to dry it, and we are going to move on to colored pencils. And i very ashamed to admit that I bought a full set of polychromos pencils like 10 years ago, and I have barely even blunted the tips on any of them, so we're going to use those today. They're beautiful pencils, and I don't know why. I always go back to my, like, grungy old Prismacolors that are, like, you know, two inches long, and they've been, like, used and abused for so many years. The time to break out the good stuff. So I am just drawing this so that my colored pencil doesn't rip the paper. Because if I go on to damp paper with a, a firm colored pencil, it could tear it. Any questions while I'm drying? Uh, Susan Walpert, when you paint, do you prefer to use an easel or flat surface? If I am painting with a thick paint, I would use an easel, like oil painting, I prefer to use an easel. But watercolor, I prefer to paint flat because um, the paint will drip off. I like to paint really wet and it would just kind of run right off the page. Okay, I think I'm going to start by um, getting in some really bright colors. And I'm going to grab this cream here. I'm going to go right in the eye. Now, colored pencils, these are polychromos, they're oil-based, they are um, much more opaque than watercolor, but they do have a little bit of translucency, so I'm going to be able to see my, um, my color underneath, which is a nice because I can kind of use the best of both worlds. I don't have to have any of my, uh, my work go to waste that I did with the, with the uh, watercolors. And throw in these little furs. It's a little, also a little bit softer. This color exactly is called ivory, number 9201-103, in case you're, you want the exact color, but it's basically a cream, and you could use whatever brand you want. And I can throw in these, these little furs very effortlessly, and I can still see a lot of the color underneath. And I think that's kind of one of the issues or one of the uh, challenges when you're painting a cat. They're so pretty when you see them like looking out the window and you get these little glints of, you know, light on their fur. And it can be really difficult to achieve that. But when you've got a nice sharp colored pencil, it becomes quite easy. And I'm going to do some here because the light's lighting up the back of the ear. Also on the nose and the bridge of the nose, these silky, shiny furs. I 
Alternately, this would be a really fun picture to do in ink. Like you could just do shades of, uh, of Indian ink and water. Uh, Mary shows, do colored pencils have light fast ratings? Yes. Um, Polychromos is one of the most light fast pencils there are. Um, also, Karen Dosh has really good light fast ratings. If you want more information on light fast ratings with colored pencils, um, you can check out Marty Owens at Owens Art. He's got a really comprehensive list and he does his own light fast testing. And also uh, Lisa at Lacry Fine Art. She is a beautiful, beautiful colored pencil artist and she will, she has a lot of information on, on uh, light fastness. Because she, she sells her work in colored pencils, so she's very um, aware of that. I might even use a gel pen for some of these whiskers. And also, like watercolor pencils, the Albright Drawer pencils are quite light fast, and so are the, uh, the Karen Dosh pencils. I'm going into this cream as well to get that really light part of, over the eyebrow area where the fur is thin. And then I go down here on the side of the body, same color, and just give little, uh, little hints of highlight. Carol Shane, what is the benefit to using an oil colored pencil and not a watercolor pencil? Watercolor pencils wouldn't be as opaque. They wouldn't stand out very well. You could use a wax pencil. Uh, as well, or your colored pencils are generally oil, wax, or a blend. Watercolor pencils aren't quite as creamy, and they don't have the, uh, they're more transparent, so they're not going to stand out on top of watercolor. I like to use them as sketching, like to sketch before I do a watercolor, if I don't want to have my pencil lines show. Please repeat the name of the pencil artist that you referenced earlier. Sure. Um, Lockery Fine Art on YouTube. And her name is Lisa Clow. Really nice person, too. And Marty Owens is the other one. He has fantastic reviews on, on uh, watercolors and colored pencils. Actually, on uh, he just did a whole uh, show on colored pencils with Steve over at the Mind of Watercolor, I believe on Steve's channel, uh, just last week, or earlier this week, if you want to have everything you ever wanted to know but were afraid to ask on colored pencils, you will get it there. <laughs> it was very comprehensive. I just like how the colored pencil can give you that little glow, that, that backlighting kind of. And you can sharpen these as you go if you want more detail. I just I'm just kind of turning it so I work on the sharp edge because who knows I could run out of these tomorrow. I can't That's be sharpening true. away and wasting burn, all that stuff. Burn out and be gone. <laughs> I'm so stingy for the amount of supplies I have. I really shouldn't be so stingy about sharpening them. Okay, so now I think I'm gonna try my darkest value, and um, I am. Not sure if I want to use a black or not. I think I will try a black since I rarely use black. Why not? Let's live a little. And we'll go in in our darkest shadows with our black. Oh, I think I might even do a little bit of a highlight on the rim of the eye. You can go really lightly with this pencil and you can just kind of blush in some darker areas. You don't have to um, go in real strong with it. You can do little circles or little ovals and just kind of gently blush in an area. So I'm going pretty conservative with my pencil colors because I went pretty wild with my watercolors. 
then this is all going to give us the appearance of a black cat. And honestly, no matter what you're painting, if you have your values right, you can do them in any colors you want. It's the value that's going to make it look accurate or not. And the value is just your shading, how light or how dark something is. turn this so I can get a little bit better of a hopefully so you can see it too I am going to just pull out some little flicks of hair just keep in mind the direction of the fur moon ram what is an alternative way to paint in the fur if I don't use colored pencils you can use um, just use a fine brush and your watercolor for any details you want to add. This is optional. You don't have to do this. You could use a pen. And as I go away from the face, I'm going to use less media. So that I've got the focus on the face and everything else is just going to be um, kind of just back up. And you can glaze over with watercolor on top of the colored pencil, and it won't stick to the colored pencil too well, but it will kind of tone it a bit. So if you feel like you've gone a little too far, uh, you can soften it back up again. So that's what's wonderful about doing mixed media techniques like this, is, is kind of integrating them and seeing how far you can take them. Oh, I did get word from the... the book I just illustrated um, yeah. this year. It's going to be available for order in about two and a half weeks. Very exciting. I saw the proof of it uh, a couple nights ago. The author, I was actually out for my evening walk and the uh, a, a vehicle pulled up behind me slowly and I was like, oh great, my biggest fan is in that vehicle. Oh no. And uh, it was Kelly. <laughs> and she's like, the book is ready. So I got to take a peek at it and she was just giving it the final okay to the publisher and just feathering it out a little bit as I go. Very little pressure, just kind of just depositing a little bit of, of this color so nothing feels out of place. The way to create harmony is to somehow cross-reference and cross-pollinate the colors as you go. There. And the colored pencil really adds quite a bit of definition. I do want to make the eyes really the center of, um, of attention here. So I'm going to grab, this is a, looks like a chartreuse color. It's called yellow, cadmium yellow lemon. Oh, it's actually the same, the same color as we used in watercolor, just about. And I'm going over the, the cream that we put in there. And look at the glow that we can get on that eye. And I am going to grab more of a green shade. And this is... Um, permanent green. It's hard to read those gold, the gold printing on that sometimes. I'm going to go over that with the yellow just to kind of build up a little bit of a glaze. Uh, Logan Kinnison, would the use of white gouache still be considered watercolor? Um, it depends. Some, some juries would consider it watercolor and some wouldn't um like this would definitely be mixed media since we've added we've gone in and we've added other media to it uh, and it pretty much only matters when you are competing in something now i am going to take my white and sharpen it and do some little final highlights and then we can decide whether we want to put a, use any gel pen on this or not. Now the one thing I'll say for these polychromos versus the Prismacolors, and granted most of my Prismacolors are old stock, so I haven't gotten any of the new ones that people have complained about. Um, the, they do, these do sharpen really well, so that's... Oh yeah, I think I can get a crisp enough line for whiskers with these. But if you're, if you're struggling to get a real bright line, you can go ahead and use your um, use your gel pens. And if you had a dark background, this would be really great for pulling those whiskers out into the background. And 
think I might do a little bit of gray on the nose. This is um, kind of a, a dark, cool gray. This is Payne's gray. Probably a color you're familiar with in the watercolor world. Put a little shading on that into the muzzle. Now the neat thing is if you press down to do your whiskers and you go over like this, the pencil is going to skip over those lines. So you will keep those nice, uh, those nice bright lines. Oops. Try not to drop your pencils. That's really bad for them. A couple little hairs over by the eyes. And they do have a very, very faint eyelash, so I'm just going to try to hint at that without making it too crazy looking. Susan Walker, does it take a lot of practice to be able to not anchor your wrist and hand? Um, I think it does. You really want to get in the habit of, of drawing from your, um, from your shoulder. It's going to make you a lot, a lot freer, um, but that's easier to do on an easel. It's kind of hard to do it on the table because you just, you automatically just want to rest your hand. So um, just, just work on an easel and you'll, you'll notice that you won't find that you have the tendency to do it so much. There, what do you think? Do you think that's done? I think it is. I think if you get much more, it'll be overworked. Yeah. I did put a few little white hairs on the chest because the uh, reference photo had a couple little white hairs and I thought that was kind of cute. Like I have a black cat that's got a stripe of, of white on its nose so um, it's nice when you can find something that kind of brings the uh, brings your the cat to look more like your cat. Uh, do you have any other questions before you wrap up today? All caught up. Awesome. Well guys thank you so much for um, uh, for hanging out and uh, if you need any of these supplies check out jerry'sartorama.com all the supplies are linked up except for the paper because I wasn't quite sure exactly what I was working on I really think it was arches after painting on it Fabriano's not quite as sized but use whatever paper you prefer and um, there's a coupon code in the video description as well so that you can save some money on your order do you have anything to add? Uh, no class next week. Yep. No live video, but that's all. Okay, great. Well, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And until next time, happy crafting.